madami na natatakot sa states ngayon kasi madami mawawalan yeah. ng trabaho, a lot of people don't have mm-hmm. savings. Should the economy go down, are you okay? Yes. Okay, because you saved, you invested. Yeah. I, alam mo, there, there comes a time in my life now na pag hindi ako makasave kahit five dollars, parang I feel inadequate. Kasi parang it's a habit na eh, di ba? Tapos, ang ginawa ko, kung if something happens here sa States, I can always go back home. Um, we have a paid up uh, mortgage. Meron na kami bahay doon na wala na akong mortgage. Okay, sige. Hi. Hi everyone, we have Mary Ariola from Las Vegas. Before we interview her, let me give you a snippet. She started a business in the States. Nagsara. What did she go through when the business uh, closed down and how did she repivot? Na ngayon, guys, 2020, sobrang yaman. So, before we start, Mary, uh, introduce yourself. What were you doing in the Philippines? When did you go to the U.S.? And then, uh, why did you go to the U.S. as well? I, I know there's a lot of people uh, in my channel who watch from the U.S. Eh, so, uh, it would be interesting to see other experiences of other Filipinos that are there also. Sige. Hi, Marvin. Um, good morning, good evening sa lahat ng mga uh, audience ni Marvin. Well, I'm a, actually a pharmacist by profession. I came here when I, when I was 26 years old. So, parang mm. half of my life nandito na. So it was hard to start as a ano kasi from the Philippines punta ka dito I wasn't a pharmacist back then so I had to from uh ano from um uh, from the st- uh, ground up meaning to say I had to start from scratch mm. so hindi agad ako pharmacist I had to take several tests mga siguro total mga 10 <laughs> Okay. Ganyan, kasi I have to, ano. So now, I'm a pharmacist uh, here in Las Vegas. I'm practicing for, uh, ano na, parang two decades na. Oh, grabe. Yeah. Grabe. So, and then I met you, uh, 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 I attended the Stock Smarts, mm. parang last year lang. Last year, I forgot <laughs> to say that also, she attended Stock Smarts. Now, she's into pharmacy but she's also trading i think philippine and u.s markets as well yes uh so uh what was your motivation why you left the philippines naman was it because family was there in the u.s or talagang it was i i, I greener pastures u.s land of the free you know was that it what was the narrative right actually ano lang i i believe na yung minsan yung dreams natin uh, are given by people to our lives kasi ako i i never wanted to be a pharmacist i i never thought of becoming one kaya lang at one point my aunt who is a uh, parang medtech from new york told me na oh you have to study pharmacy school kasi you'll be in the us parang ganyan so it was a dream that was given to me hindi ko hindi ko alam that really god was ano was weaving the the plans that he has for me so ganun ang start i was actually teaching sa ceu before i was a, a, a college professor and then i moved to the states in 92 mm. ganyan so, uh when you moved to the states uh automatically you became a pharmacist or eto yung mga eto yung mga hindi nakikita ng pilipino naman eh, that in between May, may mga, uh, I'm gonna release another video. She's in Australia naman. She's mm-hmm. in marketing. Nagmamarket siya ngayon ng hotel. Pero there was a time na umiiyak siya kasi barista siya. That, na, sanay siya sa office job. Pero nakatayo na siya buong araw. Did you ever experience that at jobs also? Yes. Actually, uh, ba parang talagang God was really humbling me. So, pro- college professor sa, sa Philippines pagdating dito, you know what I did? I was, uh, ano, um, preschool assistant. Mm-hmm. So we were changing diapers of babies. Oh. <laughs> oh, talagang sabi ko, pero eto eto talaga yung mindset. You have to unlearn what you have learned. Pagdating mo sa ibang bansa, kung ano ka sa, sa country natin, pagdating mo dito, you have to really unlearn everything that you have learned. Kasi pag hindi, you, you stay in that mindset na parang ah, ganito ako sa Philippines, hindi ako pwedeng mag-start sa bottom. Kasi, di ba? Pero, pag in-unlearn mo yung learned things mo, and then you're willing to adapt, that's when, uh, you know, God 
brings you to another level of so, where how, he wants how long was that uh, from the time na nag, uh, you were changing diapers 1992 mm-hmm. I assume nag-aral ka muna and then you became a pharmacist uh, ilan years in between yun Oh, matagal. Kasi ano yun eh, um, I had to, ano pa, isa pa, nag-volunteer pa muna ako kasi yung, yung practice ng pharmacy dyan tsaka dito was very different. So, nag-volunteer muna ako to a Filipino that owns a pharmacy in downtown LA. Tapos, after a month, sabi niya, Oy, Osang, she calls, she calls, she calls, she calls me, he, he calls me Osang, sabi niya, Osang, okay, sige, meron akong opening. I will uh, no, take you in. So, from 92, I was able to take the test uh, siguro mga four years. Tapos, naging pharmacist ako dito ano na, 2002. But I still had to take kasi yung pharmacy din sa LA, sa California. Iba kasi, pagpunta mo sa ibang state, iba yung law. Hmm. So, meaning, pag nag, nagkaroon ka ng license sa isang state, magtatake ka ulit ng law if you want to go to a different state. Parang so, ganyan. Pero yung isang com- yung pharmacy, isa lang yun for everything. You just have to challenge the law part. So when so, did you start matagal. turning well na talaga as a pharmacist? What year was it? Para, I, I wanted, the reason why I'm asking that, I want to show people na 92 ka pumunta, baka hindi sinunong tao kagod states, 1993, one year after, okay na ako. Ganun. How long How long did it take? Naman na parang, so, sulit na tong pag-states ko. <laughs> ganun, ganun. Ah, guys, okay. alam yun, sobrang yaman ni Mary, guys. Sobrang yaman. <laughs> Hindi na mas maya, mayaman ako sa kaibigan. <laughs> okay, so yung nag-start na talagang maganda na yung earning ko nung naging intern pharmacist na ako. So meaning yung yung pharmacist kasi kung six figure income sila ngayon, yung pag-intern pharmacist ka, you get 75% of the salary of a pharmacist. Mm. So siguro that was mga 9 98 or 97. Okay. Yun, maganda na yung kita ko noon. So, Tapos, I just have to take several tests again. So, six Tapos, years. finally, full-fledged na ako at 2002. Wow, matagal pa rin. Oo. Okay. Kasi, may, nag, nag-fail din ako. <laughs> mm-hmm. Bumagsak. Tapos, yung ganyan. So, part, okay. part, part ng deal. Tapos, during that time, I was having, I had my baby. I had my daughter in 96. Mm. So, again, challenge na naman sa life mo. Ano uunahin mo? Mag, mag-exam ka muna? O yung family mo ba? So, ganyan. So, kami mag-asawa, nag, nag-ano kami, we had a pact na sabi niya, sige, I'm going to take muna some some classes para gumanda yung salary niya, salary grade niya. Ako naman, sabi ko, sige, mag-aral ka muna, I'll take care of the baby. Pagkatapos niya, ako naman ang nag-aral to pursue. So, parang hindi naman siya straight na talagang tuloy-tuloy yung pag-pursue ko ng examination. Talagang may mga, may, nag-stop ako kasi I had to have a baby, tapos I had to raise her, I had to stop from working. Mm-hmm. Ganyan. So, it, it was really, ano. So, from 92 to 98, 98 talaga naging better. Tapos from 98 to 2002, 2002, that, yun talaga, uh, kasi everyone knows it naman sa States, you medical profession, it's a very, very good industry from nurses, yes. doctors, to dentists, anyone in that industry. Uh, I, I think above average, lalo, lang, lalo na ngayon when, uh, when things are not so good, uh, mas mm-hmm. lalo silang kailangan. And ganun din eh, the, di- the difference between the States and the Philippines is aging population. Kaya nga very, very uh, lucky yung political issue in healthcare sa States because of, because of yun, aging population eh. There's more old people than than younger people. Right. My question was, from 92 to 98, nung hindi siya ganun kalaki, paano ka nag-survive? Um, yung husband ko was also working. Mm. Tapos talagang, alam mo, minintain namin yung lifestyle. Na kahit ngayon, kahit malaki na yung kinikita namin, we maintain the same lifestyle. Hindi kami bumibili lagi ng... Kasi dito uso yung every three years, magpabalik ka rin sa sakyan, di ba? Or kaya bibili ka ng bahay na pagkalaki-laki, tapos tatlo lang kayo. So in other words, nung umpisa, nagre-rent lang kami. We bought our first house in the year 2000. Yung medyo okay na yung salary. Mm. In, oh. That was in uh, Orange County, mal- mga five minutes from oh, the Orange County. Orange County, so Costa Mesa. Pero ito pa yung interesting, no? Uh, yung Orange County na part, puro Asians na nandun. And yung nag- Ngayon! Oh, nagiging difference na, yung nagiging mayaman sa states, puro mm-hmm. Asian, Asian, Asians din in, in general. Uh, feeling ko kasi bukod sa masipag, hindi sila ganun ka, they don't spend as much as compared to others na 
even if I can't afford it, as long as I have a credit card, I can spend and I can I can buy it. And I think yun yung pinaka difference ng uh, immigrants that that are from Asia compared to other countries. So in 2002, you were earning more already. Uh, did you start to invest already, or dun na talaga you went you went all in dun sa business na sinimulan niyo? Yeah, ang nung 2002 hindi pa kasi from di, di ba nasa Orange County kami. So my husband was still working for Deutsche Bank. Mm. Uh, back then sa Orange County yon. So ako yung nauna sa Las Vegas. Mm. Tapos sila sum, sumunod na lang sila siguro mga 2003 na or 2004. But um yung time na yon, yung bahay namin sa Orange County pinarent namin. Grabe. Mm. So kang yumayaman kasi your live so it's is it still there your nandoon pa rin yung nasa yeah. uh, okay. Bag, bago mag meltdown in 2005 binenta oh, na namin kasi nag thank you market di ba oh galing nag thank you market 2008 so 2005 nagbenta kami galing. so you earned rental income for 2 plus years tapos you were able to sell it higher pa before nag crash that Doble. <laughs> Ba't ka pa nagsa-stocks kung lumalangoy ka na sa real estate income? I have a question. What did you do with the money after you sold it? Ayun. So, ang ginawa namin, um, so okay, so nandito na kami sa Las Vegas noon, so we had the money. My parents came came from the Philippines. Mm. So, during that time, sabi ko matatanda na sila. My, my dad was like uh, uh, early 70s. My mom was uh, late 60s. Ganyan. So, sabi ko, why don't we put up a Filipino store? Kasi during that time, yung mga 2002-2003, maraming Asians na lumilipat dito, pero kukul- kulang ang Filipino stores. Mm. So, nag-put up kami ng store, tapos in-employ namin yung parents ko. Mm-hmm. Tapos, doon na sila nagsisweldo rather than working for someone else na magda-drive pa si Papa, ganyan-ganyan. So, kaya kami nag-put up ng business. So, yung nakuha namin doon, nilagay namin. Oh, oh no. Okay. Store. Okay. So, re- real estate income, uh, mm-hmm. capital appreciation, you transferred mm-hmm. it to a business hub. Just to give you context, madaming mga, para alam mo yung mga psyche ng entrepreneur, madaming entrepreneur ngayon, when they start earning from their business naman, they always think, anong real estate yung pwede kong bilhin? Ganon din yung mga stock, nagsa-stocks na, kumita ko sa stocks, anong real estate pwede kong bilhin? Or anong business pwede kong simulan? Ikaw, balik na naman. Kumita ko sa real estate, anong business yung pwede kong gawin? So, from something that was safer, you wanted to take in more risk. Okay, so what, what how did your business go? Anong, okay. bakit you uh, mentioned mm-hmm. na you wanted to start it because madaming Filipinos doon. Pero, how did it start? How long did it last? Did it make, how did it make money? Tapos, what cost? It's down. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> so, yung pala, um, kasi di ba, pinaparent, nung binenta na namin yung bahay, so kailangan kami bumili din dito ng bahay. Kasi pag mataas ang income mo dito, you have to have um, parang more tax uh, shelter. So, ang isang tax shelter namin is to buy a house. So, bumili kami ng bagong bahay. Mm. So, habang binibuild yung bahay, nag-apartment muna kami. Parang ganyan. So anyway, so nung, nung, ano, nung nag-start kami ng, ng Filipino store, that was in 2000 and late 2003 yata. Tapos nag-close shop kami 2007. Four years. Oo, kasi nung time na yun, merong nag-open na parang uh, ano dito, Asian market across the street na sarili nila yung, yung shopping center. So, di ba, pagkakatabi mo ang Chinese um, uh, business, usually papatayin ka talaga. <laughs> yeah, that's just like, ano uh, yung ano eh. So, kasi ang unang-una, uh, wala silang rent kasi they own the property. And the, uh, what, what, do we have to ano to compete that with de ba so talagang kung mas m- m- yung uh, difference ng 50 cents sa amin tsaka sa kanila doon na sila pupunta so nung nakita nung husband ko yon sabi niya i think it's it's about time to close shop pero hindi namin alam na magkakaroon ng ina- economic meltdown so ang ginawa pala namin doon was kinausap namin yung owner kasi we had 6 more months lease remaining E eh pagka hindi mo tinapos yung six months lease mo na yon, babayaran mo pag walang, pag walang magre-rent, di ba? So yun ang dilemma namin. Paano kami makakaalis dito? How much so kinausap the, namin yung owner. How much was, how much was the, the rent at that time? I assume mataas yun kasi bumagsak lang naman yun after 2008 eh. Do you remember pa how much was 2200. it? 2200. Ah, okay, okay, okay. 2200. Okay, okay. So anong, what happened? 
So, ang, ang ginawa namin, kasi ang, ang importante, no, as business owners, dapat you have to maintain. Or kahit na hindi ka business owner, kailangan you have to maintain yung good relationship mo with people. Mm. So, ang ginawa namin, ang owner nung building na yon was Chinese. So, they live in Colorado. Kinausap namin, sabi namin, oh, I think uh, we're, we're losing money already, ganyan-ganyan. Tapos, sabi namin, is there a way that you can help us get out of this lease? So, alam mo, ginawa nila, sila nagpa-publish ng ano, ng, um, sa, sa Chinese newspaper that they have this, we have a property for lease, etc., etc. Wala, wala silang sinig ngil sa amin, alam mo ba, we got out of that lease. Mm, with their helping us. Uh, I have a question uh, before you decided to close down. Ano yun? Uh, the whole business talagang did not make money or there was a point naman na it was making money tapos nung 2007 na nung nagbukas yung uh, nagbukas yung Chinese na supermarket mm-hmm. or yung Chinese establishment, dun, dun, mm-hmm. dun kayo natatalo nun. Tapos second question, uh, ano yun? The Chinese uh, mall, nagbibenta rin sila ng Pinoy items or because halos similar sila, natamaan kayo? Yes. Ma- be- marami silang binibenta na Chinese uh, goods pero may Filipino rin. Kasi alam mo naman yung mga wholesalers pagka nakita nila na may bagong tindahan. Of course, they wanted to ano, to cater, you know, to, to open up and see if they can uh, carry their products. Mm. So, ganun na nangyari. And then, yung, yung first question mo, yes, bumababa na yung ano namin, yung aming uh, sales. Mm. Pero, yeah. yung initial capital outlay naman, mm-hmm. versus nung umexit kayo, you came, you came in naman na may profit pa rin uh, for the entire lifetime of the business. Oh, it was something na talagang, ano na lang to, uh, may, at least may aral tayo na bulat dito. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Actually, kung titingnan mo, meron pa kaming kita kaya lang kung magpapatuloy kami. Kasi I was working that time. I was full-time. Si June, yung husband ko, was full-time sa store. So kahit na may business kami, may full-time job ako, I did not quit. Kasi sabi ko, mas maganda pa rin may fallback, di ba? Mm-hmm. So, so, yan. So, instead of us putting every month yung kulang na, for example, kulang ng 500, dagdag ako ng 500, kulang ako ng 700, imbis na makukuha pa yung kinikita namin, we'd rather close shop. Mm-hmm. Parang ganun lang naisip namin. So, at least it's still, ano, uh, it actually made money lang talaga. It was a move lang na talagang, uh, na, and dumating ba sa point na, I wanted to ask this, dumating ba sa point also na hindi lalabanan namin yan, tatalo, gagalingan namin sa, pag, sa pag-market niyan or, or sabi nyo, uh, baka this is too big already na kahit anong gawin namin, hindi namin ito matatalo? Yeah, yun, yun ang naging decision namin kasi talagang nag-research kami. You know, every day I would go to that store and look at what, that you know, yung mga items sa kinikerry nila and pretty much we have the same. Diba? Pagkatapos, ang isang na, nung na-found out namin na sarili nila yung building that they're not paying any rent, sabi, ah, talo na tayo dito. Hmm. Kasi baka, kung baka, baka kaya natalo, defense, kasi nakita nila, baka kaya natalo kasi nakita, uy, may ari ng Filipino na grocery dito rin nagsha-shopping, kaya baka siguro siya <laughs> na, Siguro na, sana nag-camouflage ako, no? But yeah, it was, ano, talagang parang hindi, imbis na, imbis na kung halbaw matatalo lang kami ng for example, lang 10,000, baka mas dumami pa kasi gusto namin talagang ano. So, ang ano lang dito, yung merong ding isang Filipino store na nag-open. So, for example, nag, nag uh, mga a, a year after, nag-open sila. Uh, yung nag-exit na kami. Nung naka-exit na kami, sila hindi pa rin, nandun pa rin. Alam mo na padlock sila. So, parang talagang it was really God who was, you know, orchestrating everything for us. Mm. Galing, so, you on. That's why the rich get richer also kasi minsan they know how to cut when it's time to cut. Um, after that, what did you do with the man? Nag-business pa ba kayo or nag-real estate na lang kayo ulit or nag-focus na lang ulit kayo sa trabaho? I understand a year after that, doon nag-crash lahat eh. Wow. So, ano, ano na yung naging next doon sa journey nyo? Pa- oh, okay. So, so actually, noong 2008, Noong 2008, umuwi kami sa Philippines not knowing na may ganyan ng economic meltdown. Mm. Actually, ang, ang ano nun was, yung dream talaga namin, we, we were praying for like four years na we wanted to go back to the Philippines. I, I don't know, for some reason, parang gusto lang namin na kasi my daughter was growing up, she was 12, ganyan. Parang 
parang we wanted her to to ano to live in the Philippines para makita niya ba yung difference ng life kasi during that time she was wondering ano na ba ako mommy am, am I Filipino I think I'm an American parang ganyan so nagkakaano siya ng identity na Filipino ba ako o Amerikano ako parang ganyan so sabi namin siguro it was time for us to move back not knowing na may ganyang economic meltdown so nung umuwi kami ng 2008 sa Philippines nag Nag-business ulit kami. <laughs> Nag-open kami ng Coke ano um, distributorship sa Pasig. Okay. So parang fa- uh, you get it from you get it from the manufacturer. Coke diretso. Oh, and then you you distribute it to restaurants, to groceries. Uh, Iba-iba na, sari-sari store, kung sino. Basta binigyan kami ng area. Oh, okay, dito sa Pasig, ito ang area nyo. So, susupplyan kami ng Coke, tapos kami mag-distribute, ganyan. Pero pag ganun, how, how, how do you make money off of that? Are the margins good ba? Or talagang volume siya ginagawa? Initially maganda ang ano, maganda yung maganda yung ano yung margin kasi nag-start kami noon kahit wala pa kami sa Philippines. Nandito pa kami sa states bago kami lumipat pag nag-nagsara yung store, nag-start na kami. Pero dumarating yung time na nagkaroon na sila ng parang bond na you have to have a million worth of bond na when we were starting wala. Okay, the, the what does the bond do for those na Par- know what it means also? Mm-mm. Parang ano siya, parang bibigyan mo ng, for example, a certain amount yung Coca-Cola, tapos yung bond mo na you will have to, ano, to parang bibili, bibilhin mo yung amount of money na yun with their product mm. for you to sell. Mm. Parang ganyan. So, kung bawa, nag-order ka ng half, um, uh, 500,000, so yung bond mo nandun lang. So, kukunin nila yon. Pag bumu- umuunti na siya, dadagdagan mo. Mm. So parang they never lose kasi may may, may cash. Exactly. Then. Pero pero what 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 were you selling? Uh, you Coke in can, uh you you mal you lahat. Liters, lahat. Uh I have a question there. Parang Pati tubig. Okay. Uh, uh so all of their Pati yung their yung powder. yung high C ano ba yung tinitimpla na Oh, uh, yung powder. Hindi ko alam ang tagal din. Sabi niya yung water lang talaga ako eh. My, my my question is this: Kasi If you're the middleman, yung gumagawa malaki margin sila for sure. Pag pinatong yung sa restaurant yun, malaki rin yung margin sila. Ha, paano kayo kikita ng ganon? Eka yun na sa middle, you, you only pass on certain certain amount. Volume. Ah, Volume. Ah. Kasi I remember there was a time where I ano rin yan, One of the things that I I try to do to earn also. Kumuha ako direct sa sa I don't know if it's a deal for everyone, pero kumuha ako direct direct sa Pepsi. Uh, mm. pero mabay pa nga deal consignment I can get whatever I want as long as mm. hindi ko buksan yung yung box I could return it I think mm. I was I was getting it yata Coke in can or Pepsi in can at around 13 pesos yata tapos ako kasi I, I was selling it na retail so pwede mm. ko beta 30, 35 so my margins were good so, uh, so mga gustong mag, mag start ng ganitong business how how good is it pa rin ba uh would it be better that sila yung magbenta retail or would it be good na, katulad nung sa'yo, uh, mid- middleman, middleman yung nangyayari? Mm. Ang problema kasi nung time na yun sa amin, we have to have a truck. Kailangan meron kaming truck, meron kaming logistics kasi how are you gonna transport from your uh, factory or yung yung storage mo to the ano. So may kailangan may tricycle or whatever. Tapos yung mga tao, yung mga pahinante mo. Mm. So ako, uh, uh, you will you earn much if it's retail. Pero yung wholesale na ganun, maliit lang margin, tapos may binabayaran ka pang mga tao, tapos pag nagkasakit, or ano, ikaw, yung ganun, mas, mas magastos pagka ano. So that's why we, we quit doing that. You, you, do you distribute, did you distribute sa mga groceries also at that time? Or, uh, how, sino, kanino nyo binabagsak yung, ano, tas, was it consignment also? Ah, uh, ano, kasha. Uh, Gosh, oo. Kaya lang ang ano doon is pag halimbawa yung yung area na yon meron ng dati tapos bagong player ka lang hindi mo hindi mo pwedeng kunin yon kasi nasa kanila ni. Eh. So in other words kung meron kang bagong eh, kung meron kang bagong store na bibig uh, bipagbibigyan much better. Eh paano okay. pag dating Pepsi sila ang gagawin mo ko? Yung ganon yung i-convert mo pa. Ganon. Okay. So the, the difference lang is sobrang lit ng margins. Hindi hindi niya kaya katulad ginawa ko na halos doble yung uh, dumodoble siya from my cost. 
Uh, Mas smart yun sa iyo. <laughs> hindi naman it's it's ano lang uh na, I I you know, what I did is nawala yung middleman. Ako yung naging middleman tapos ako rin yung naging retailer I guess. And pero yung risky din naman dun is ano eh uh if no one buys also. Yun yun sa inyo kasi may sure buyer na lagi. I think that's Uh-oh. the approach naman if you go uh, that that route also. So nag-business nalug nalugi after nalugi or nagsara kayo nagsara kayo. Uh, nagsara kami. Nagsara okay, kami. Traffic, kasi, traffic pa um, nakuha lang siguro namin yung ano namin. Tapos it was more of a family business na rin. Ganyan. Okay. So, then after that, what happened next? Tapos, ang, ang nangyari, sunod nun, uh, nagpunta kami sa Batangas. Kasi ang sabi ng husband ko, it's bet. Kasi my husband's from Batangas, from Lipa. So, lumipat kami doon. Mas malamig. Ganyan, ganyan. Tapos, the same pa rin, I opened up a pharmacy. <laughs> <laughs> Alam mo yon, hindi mo talagang pag nasa blood mo na eh. You always look for avenues where you you ano, yung yung talent mo will be used, ganyan ganyan. Tapos yon, nag, nag nag pharmacy kami sa Lipa. Siguro we had that store uh, pharmacy naman for siguro mga 4 or 5 years kasi I have to go back to the states na. That was in 2014. Graduate anak ko. On brand or franchise ba yung ginawa nyo? Hindi, sarili kong brand. Kasi inaan, kung mag, magpa-franchise ako noon, grabe ang mahal. Mm-hmm. Pero pag nag-branding ako ng sarili ko, kalahati lang. Pero I have something in my mind na parang gusto kong gawin yung ginagawa dito sa states where, di ba, pag, pag pupunta ka dito, people will be looking for pharmacists to mm-hmm. speak to. Tapos pag may, mag, pwede kang mag-recommend ng mga over-the-counters na pwede mong ibigay sa pasyente. Yun ang ginawa ko. Kaya yung mga tao doon, hindi sila bibili hanggat hindi nila ako nakakausap. Kasi they wanted my opinion. My question for that is, kung ganun, you started it from scratch, paano mo na, paano, paano mo na yung supplies mo? Inisa, yun yung nagiging problem for a lot of people that are not doing franchise. Isa-isa yun, lahat ng mga suppliers, they have to contact them all individually. And then, I, I, I'm sure yung sistema naman, nakuha mo na from the States and you, you just had to implement it. Here. Uh, the reason I'm asking also, baka there might be people who want to start their own pharmacy. Sure ako, because of what's mm-hmm. happening right now, madami magsa-start ng pharmacy after this. <laughs> oh, totoo yan, totoo yan. Uh, mad- madam, 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 madami, 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 madami nang mga ganun. Oo. Again, babalik ako dun sa lagi kong inaano, yung relationship talaga sa tao, very important. Yung, yung bang, uh, yung personable ka, yung hindi ka mahirap kausap, when they when somebody asks you something you you always yung the power of saying yes kasi i've worked for a retail dito corporate retail ako dito sa states for almost 20 years doon ako nag-start talaga so talagang yung relationship ko sa tao was really good naman so ang okay yung mga suppliers ko sa ano lang ako bumibili sa bangbang what, what what's that bangbang eh yung bangbang in santa cruz Okay. Meron siyang, may isang street doon na puro generic. Ah. Uh, gene, uh, generic capital of, of Santa Cruz. Tapos, so yung mga generic uh, medicines ko, doon ko binibili. Pagkatapos yung mga branded ko, meron na akong mga, ano, may mga suppliers ako. Pero may supplier din ako sa Divisoria. Mm. Na uh, ang uh, Dyna drug yata is what it's called. I forgot na the name eh. So, you don't need so pala doon ako, ako mismo pumupunta. You don't need to go pala to mga brands specifically then to be able to may mga may mga wholesalers na pala. Okay. Yes, wholesalers. Okay. Tapos um pero yun lang, pag generic ano company, generic ka bibili cash yon, pero yung mga brand pwede kang humingi ng 30 days. Mm. Tapos kung kasi di ba probinsya, so talagang pumupunta ako sa Manila kasi kung maghihintay ako ng ng ano ng ahente na nagpupunta sa probinsya, Mas ma- may mark up pa sila. So, I'd rather deal with the company directly para mas yung margin ko mapunta sa akin. Speaking of markup, saan mas malaki yung markup? Sa generic or sa branded? Kasi yung generic, you buy it cheaper also pero you sell it cheaper sa branded. Siyempre, you'll buy it higher tapos you get to sell it higher naman also. Sa generic. Ah, talaga? What? Ako. Pero ganito ha, hindi lahat ng generic um, medications are equal. So dapat a- ako, as, as a pharmacist, I really look for the, the name of the manufacturer. Kasi yun ang, kasi alam ko na, okay, it was made in a way na yung uh, good manufacturing par- practices were, you know, you know were met, etc. So I, ako talaga pumipili and I don't carry a lot of generics. Mm. Mga two or three lang. 
I, Otherwise, I puno yung pharmacy mo. I didn't know that, ah, na, na generic brands have larger margins. Kala ko mas maliit. Alam ko, man, sobrang mura lang kasi ng cost ng, ng, ng medicine, lalo na pag binas-produce mo yan. Kasi yung mahal talaga sa medicine yung research, eh. Pero yung, ano, yung kung paano siya ginagawa, since may machines na it's mass-produced, it becomes easier to uh, it becomes easier to produce it. Tapos, I think the biggest cost pa rin is uh, marketing sa mga pharma companies yes. and the, the research. Pero the actual cost of the medicine is not as ano. And I'm shocked na mas malaki pa rin kita sa, sa, sa generic ano, medicines. Yeah, mas malaki, mas malaki ang kita. Kasi, uh, say, binili mo siya ng 50 pesos. Kasi, okay, Kasi ito ulit ha, Marbs, ano to, mindset ulit. Hmm. Pag ang, ang pasyente bumili ng 2 pesos na generic versus ang brand is 10 pesos, saan bibili? Yung 10, di ba? Kasi mas mahal, mas effective daw. Hmm. Pero actually, hindi. Hmm. Y- yun, yun ang ano. <laughs> Mali yata ginawa ako kasi nung, nung because of the this ano, this illness, I, I bought I bought a lot of Ano, vitamin C, tapos binili ko rin yung brand din. <laughs> napamahal, napamahal ako. <laughs> tapos na-realize ko, mas mura pa rin pala yung generic and then sabi, pareho lang din talaga siya. Right Med is actually, <laughs> ano, well, hindi, 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 hindi ako bayad ha, pero kasi it's made by Unilab. So, minsan kasi, yung, yung ibibibibibibibibibibibibibibibibibibibibibibibibibibibibibibibibibibibibibibibibibibibibibibibibibibibibibibibibibibibibibibibibibibibibibibibibibibibibibibibibibibibibibibibibibibibibibibibibibibib
nag-business ka na kaga, nag-business ka or you started to work. Okay. I started to work. I started to work. Pero ganto nung di, di okay. Well, while we were doing pala the pharmacy, we joined uh we took the test for ano for life insurance agent. So nag life insurance agent kami diyan. Talaga sa so tingin we were... <laughs> Oh, oh, oh. Okay. Um... oh kasi Parang dumating sa time, one day my dad asked me, sabi niya, sabi niya anak, what do you think is the best business? Sabi mm-hmm. ko sa kanya, alam mo dad, ang pinakamagandang business ngayon, yung wala kang, yung, ang puhunan mo lang yung talent mo. Wala kang, wala kang uh, goods, wala kang anything. Mm-hmm. Yung, yung pinaka-inventary mo lang yung talent mo. Mm-hmm. Sabi ko sa kanya ganon. So, nung sinabi niya sa akin, Sabi ko, oh nga no, sinabi ko sa daddy ko, eh, bakit ako hindi, why, why am I not, I'm not capitalizing on what I know? So, nag, nag-exam ako sa ano, sa, to become a life insurance agent. Mm. So, I was working with Pro Life. Mm. So, you so did would, up until, when, uh, you're still do when did, until when did you do that naman? At, up until 2014, kasi pag wala ka ng production, inaalis ka na sa company eh. Okay, so after that, fast Thank forward. You, Fast forward 2014, you went to the States, you you worked. Uh, what led you to go into the stock market? Ng, when did you start? 2019? Uh, ano, 2016. Ah, 2016. Pero, pero, nung nasa Philippines ako, nag-enroll na ako sa, ano, sa, isang, sa, sa, sa isang company na sabi ko, I want, blindly ha, hindi ko talaga alam kung paano. I just, parang naririnig lang kita na, oh, Jollibee, ganyan. How, mm-hmm. So, you know, parang naing, nainganyo lang ako na, okay, bakit, bakit, why don't I explore that? So, pagdating ko naman dito sa States, pero pala, um, nagaano na ako sa, sa unit, uh, sa mutual funds. Mm-hmm. Mutual funds na ako. Yun lang ang alam ko. Okay. My, my question is this right now. Um, madami na natatakot sa States ngayon kasi madami mawawala yeah. ng trabaho. A lot of people don't have mm-hmm. savings. Should the economy go down, are you okay? Yes. Okay, because you saved, you invested. Yeah. Uh, alam mo, there, there comes a time in my life now na pag hindi ako makasave kahit $5, parang I feel inadequate. Kasi parang it's a habit na eh, di ba? Tapos, ang ginawa ko, kung if something happens here sa states i can always go back home um we have a paid up uh, mortgage meron na kaming bahay doon na wala na akong mortgage mm. so we can probably live there if something really bad happens we can mm. always go back mm. so I'll, I'll just end it with this i think madaming uh, there's a lot of Amer- a lot of americans right now or filipinos slash americans mm-hmm. or whoever uh the statistics have shown that uh six weeks lang yung worth of savings. And if the lockdown continues or they're unemployed for more than six weeks, of course, the government has a stimulus. May, they're adding also. Uh, but it doesn't really guarantee that they will have enough money for a long period of time. Eh. Uh, what's your suggestion for them, given that you're in America? Uh, must, if you know what's happening there. Uh, how can they weather this? What should they do uh, to be able to get by? From Sa one akin, ano, super um, yaman, one super yaman person pala. I forgot to say that. Oh. Man. Bi, uh, bilang Filipino no kasi kami right now I'm still working kasi I'm in the I'm one of the frontliners. Pero kahit na nagwo-work ako, we still make ways para kumita. We make longganisa, you know, we freeze it. Tapos in in offer namin sa mga kaibigan namin, yung ganun. And then um in other words Pwede mong i-reinvent yung sarili mo kasi kung ano yung ginagawa mo ngayon, it doesn't mean na it's gonna be all throughout your life that you're gonna do it. I'm a pharmacist now. Maybe tomorrow I won't be. So, dapat inihahanda na nila or kumuk- tumitingin sila ng mga avenue na, oh, baka pwede kong pasukan yun, na walang, walang masyadong capital na kailangan kundi yung talent mo lang. Mm, okay. So, yung ganon. So, or... Yun, yun ang pwede kong anuhin. Sobrang galing. So, to all of the uh, people watching this from the US, be like Mary Ariola. Uh, try to find ways <laughs> on how to earn money. And ganun lang din naman yun. The technique is multiple streams of income. Uh, your salary, your investments. Then, if you can find other sidelines that will help you make money, be 
even be- better. So thank you so much, Mary, for being part of yeah. the vlog. And if you're, if you guys have any questions, also put them on the comment section, and I'll try to make as yeah. much videos uh, from that as possible as well. And yun lang, uh, it's nice to hear different experiences of different people. And if you are from the Philippines, man, and you are watching this, you will always see that ano eh, uh, the people also outside the Philippines uh, experience also bad times, hard times. It's not always green din eh. But whoever succeeds is the one. Para sa akin na, whoever wants it more, they're the ones who would, will always succeed because they push hard for it. And wala naman din sa sa ano yun kung what your job is, where your location is as well. So that's it. Thank you. Ano Marbs? Marbs, alam mo gusto. I I really wanted to thank you from the bottom of my heart. Because because <laughs> ano eh, talagang tutoo. Ah, Ako, I wanted to champion yung mga next generation. Kasi kahit nung nandiyan ako sa Philippines, nagturo ako sa university. I went back to teaching. Kasi sino yung may influence mo? Yung mga, yung mga next generation. Kasi yung generation ko, tapos na eh. So, sino yung mag sa kanya? So, talagang, really, I applaud you for truly championing. Kaya lahat ng mga, lahat ng mga ano ko sa'yo, yung affirmation mo sa amin, talagang super. Kaya, yan talagang bawa ko sa'yo. I, I really, sabi ko nga, when I grow up, I want to be like you. <laughs> Ayun, yeah. Oh, so yun naya na tuloy ako. But anyways, you have to end this video. Yeah. Thank you so much, Mary Ariola, for being part of the vlog. So, I hope this video helps you trade well, trade strong, trade smart. See you all again soon, guys, and God bless you all.